Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a Wizard Talent build. A quick note to mention that this is a higher level character and I may have more talent points than you do, but this guide is mostly focusing on talent priority more than completing the full build. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with tab 1, and our priority should always be Gilded Sword as this boosts our damage dealt to all monsters. Next should be Sharpened Axe, as this contributes to your base weapon power and is a very important stat at any point in the game. Your third priority should be putting 50 points into Idle Casting, as this helps boost our AFK gain rates while fighting. There is a diminishing returns on this skill, and at 100 points this only gives you 17%, so your priority is not on the skill after 50 points. The next priority should be Overclocked Energy, as this is one of the main damage sources from all mages, the Shaman and the Wizard. After that is Mana Booster, and this helps us capitalize on Overclocked Energy. The more mana we have, the more damage we deal. From here, our priority becomes a little different depending on what you need at what point in the game. You can choose to have Book of the Wise for more wisdom to increase your damage, or you can choose the Quickness Boots to boost your agility, which will help you increase your accuracy. If you don't have enough accuracy for the monsters you're fighting, all of your other stats become basically useless. So always make sure you have enough accuracy. And we're going to go ahead and boost our agility just so you can kind of see what the accuracy looks like. And then we'll go ahead and put our points into Book of the Wise. We will need to come back to this tab at the end of the build because there are talents in tab 3 that will allow us to boost things like Book of the Wise a little bit more. So with tab 1 done, let's move on to tab 2. And our priority gets a little wonky here, but we'll get through it. And your first priority is always going to be power overwhelming. And this is an effect to increase your weapon to increase the effect of weapon power on your damage. So this makes all of the weapon power you gain just a little bit more powerful. So now we have a priority that's kind of split between two, and they are Knowledge is Power, which boosts your damage based on Wisdom, and then your second of equal priority would be Mana Overdrive, as this gives you a more maximum mana, and this is a percentage based, so it really helps scale it up and make your overclocked energy more valuable. At this point, this is where I was saying things get a little wonky, and that's talking about our active attack skills here. And with active attacks, there's two things that it does for us. First is it does give us a damage boost while we're fighting monsters, but there is a hidden multiplier that affects your kills per hour while you're AFK or offline. And the multiplier is only on set attack skills. For the wizard, it's going to be on mini fireball on this page. Uh, energy Bolt, it does give you some extra damage, but your priority really should be into Energy Fireball. So with this, I normally put about 10 points into Energy Bolt and then put 40 to 50 points in Mini Fireball, as this will really help boost my damage overall and make sure I get the full amount of the K multiplier from this skill. But back to our priorities after that, and your priority should be either choosing Untwisted Robes if you have enough wisdom on your gear, or it may be better for you to choose Individual Insight for more base wisdom. So if your gear is high enough, your Untwisted Robe should be your first priority, as the scaling on this stat is very good for the Mage classes. After that, we'll go into Individual Insight for just more base wisdom. At this point, it's a lot more optional on what you want to choose, but I choose chopping it easy as this can give you a small damage boost. The scaling is pretty bad on this, but it does give you more damage based on your highest minigame score in chopping. So I go ahead and usually put uh, the, a little amount of points in here. If I had 50 points, that would be what I would go up to, um, but we can get a little bit more from tab three, so we'll come back to this. The other skills that are worth mentioning is your next, as this can allow you to have just a little bit more damage on your character if you're actively playing that character. But if it's an AFK character, you don't really want to put points into here. The other option is for free meal, as this can help reduce the amount of food that you're consuming as you're fighting monsters. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to tab three. And our priority here is always going to start with paperwork 
and that is going to boost our damage based on how many stamps you have in your collection. So the more stamps you can collect from all the various sources, the more effective this talent is going to be for you. But it scales very well, and we get 41% damage for every 10 stamps we have, which can give us a huge bonus to our total damage over here. Your next priority should always be Wiz Wombo, Wombo as this can allow you to put more talent points into Book of the Wise on tab 1. From here, there is a little bit of a mix up on your priority as well, depending on what you want, but I usually decide to assign my attack talents at this point. So, Ice Shards, Floor is Lava, Tornado, and Mana is Life all can give you that hidden bonus to your AFK kill multiplier. So, I generally recommend putting about 20 points into each of these talents as it'll allow you to spread your talents out and get the most damage whether you're active or afk if you are actively using this character it is worth investing a few more points into your attack skills as this damage does scale quite nicely on the wizard the next priority is another one that's very important however there's a gimmick to this one and that is fuchsia flasks and this allows you to boost the maximum level of overclocked energy based on the maximum on the level of your mage is best bubble in alchemy so you can put points into this and i have about 33 points in my mage's best bubble right now so i can go ahead and put a few more in there and this will allow me to upgrade the level of my overclocked energy just a little bit more so at base it's only level 100 and with that other talent i can get it to 133. There is a gimmick here, and that is that you can reset your talents at this point, and the bonus levels and overclocked energy will stay even without the points in the Fuchsia Flask. You can also put the talents of Fuchsia Flask into a second tab, so if you have a different preset, uh, you can put them in here, and that would also affect your first preset. But, anyways, back to our priority here, and everything else becomes a lot more optional. So if you need the additional points, you can put them into earlier education, as this will allow you to get a little bit more utility from your other tab. The next choices you can make are really kind of depending on what you want to boost, and your choices are between staring statues, occult obols, or the nearby outlet. Uh, staring statues is basically useless as the only real benefit is to your secondary skills or but occult obols is also not very good as it's based on how much wisdom you get from your obols i have about 20 wisdom from my obols and it's it only gives you an additional 75 percent more wisdom than what's listed so it's really not a very big boost so I think you would get more benefit coming from nearby outlet to help increase your charge rate and let you collect souls a little more often. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my points into here and anything left over, I would dump into obols just as a way to get a small damage boost, if anything. And with tab three done, we do need to head back to tab one really quick. And this will allow us to put more points into Book of the Wise as this can give us another large damage boost. At this point, if you have any points left over, there are three to four talents that you can put your points into, and this will allow you to increase your gains by a little bit. Your first would be maxing out idle casting, as you can get a little bit more benefit out of this. If you have leftover points after this, you can choose between putting them into Farsight for increased critical chance and, or, and critical damage, or into Lucky Clover, as this can increase your drop rate and your EXP gain. The last one to mention is you can put them into Fist of Rage to help boost your maximum HP and crit damage. Our next section is our Star Talents tab, and I do want to go over these briefly. And your first priority should always be putting points into Will of the Eldest and the Beginner Best Class. I usually put about 20 points in these as my highest classes are just under level 200. And there is a thing to note in that is if your classes are not this high of a level, then you should put less points into these talents as it does cap based on your highest level classes. From there, I always put points into attacks on Simmer as this can give me more AFK gains. TikTok is very similar for more AFK gains. 
And then from here, I always like putting points into Goblet of the Hemoglobin, as this can really help my survivability and reduce my food consumption. There is one more talent point worth mentioning on this tab. I haven't unlocked it, but it's called Stonks, and it will allow you to gain more free special talent points, basically. You can put 30 points into this talent and gain 48 uh, star talent points back, but anything over 30 points in this is not very useful. But let's move on to tab two, and your first priority here should be Dungeonic Damage, and this is one of the largest damage boosts from your star talents, and it's based on how many dungeon credits you've earned. So the more dungeons you do, the more damage that this will give you. So let's go ahead and max that out. And then your next priority should be Frothy Malk to get more out of your foods and potions. After this, everything else is very optional, and I usually choose to put my points into telekinetic storage for more carry capacity, and then always one point into printer sampling and shrine architect for my shrines. Past this, there is a few optional talents that can be very helpful. First is the mega crit that's in this spot right here from the dungeon's flurbo shop, and it can boost your critical chance as well as give you the the potential for mega crits if you have more than 100% crit chance. There's also the just XP that allows you to have more class XP while you're farming on this character. If you're a lower level, pulsation might be helpful for you as this can boost the rate that you regen mana and allow you to use your active attacks much quicker. And then it's always nice to mention cardiovascular to help increase your card drop chance. A couple quick tips to help make sure you're gaining the most out of your talents is to first make sure you assign all of your active abilities to your attack bar. So there is a few talents on tab 2 and a few on tab 3 that you need to make sure are on your skill bar. If they are not on your attack bar they will not be used while you're offline. The other thing to mention here is that if you're playing this character actively or online the order that you're abilities are in does matter as the game prioritizes whatever's in the first attack slot and then the second and so on. So make sure you have, for example, mini fireball up front and have your energy uh, bolt a little later in your priority so that it will use the more damaging attacks first. And the last thing I want to mention is that there is an easy way to reset your talents and that's by using your star talent reset potions. These fragments drop from different monsters uh, throughout the game and they can also be bought from various shops throughout the game. But this will let you instantly reset all of your talent points and let you reassign them however you want. There is also the star talent reset potion that I just used that will allow you to reassign all of your star talents so you'll be able to reassign them if you make a mistake. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content and a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.